Hello, I am Stephanie Valencia, and I will be presenting our work, The Less I Type, The Better, How AI Language Models Can Enhance or Impede Communication for AAC Users. This work was completed at Google Research. Augmentative and alternative communication, or AAC, devices are used for communication when verbal speech is not available. People with a wide variety of disabilities and abilities may use AAC devices. AAC devices generate speech through specialized interfaces and a variety of input methods, such as touch screens, head switches, or eye trackers. Steve, an AAC user who has a motor disability, will demonstrate his own AAC setup in the following short video. Most people with ALS end up using an on-screen keyboard and having to type each individual letter with their eyes. For me, communicating is slow. As Steve said, AAC devices enable communication, but communicating with an AAC device takes more time, cognitive and physical effort than communicating with oral speech. To stay in time in conversation, AAC users often sacrifice expressivity by giving shorter responses or deciding not to participate in conversation at all. Recent advances in large neural language models have created new opportunities for improving the usability and efficiency of AAC devices. These models can generate text that is contextually relevant and grammatically correct, potentially enabling AAC users to generate conversational phrases with minimal effort. While large language models show great promise to improve the speaking rate for AAC users, we do not yet know what it is like for AAC users to actually use these models in the context of real-time communication support. In this work, we were specifically interested in understanding what are the benefits, if any, of interacting with large language models for AAC users. What do AAC users find useful and what can be improved about generated model output? What questions or concerns do AAC users have of implementing this type of technology in their communication systems? To answer these questions, we created interactive prototypes showcasing large language model functionalities through different concepts. And we use this to elicit conversations with AAC users about large language models and their potential to support communication. After much iteration, we landed on the concept of speech macros as a tool to help us communicate large language model functionality to AAC users. Speech macros were designed to be purpose-driven shortcuts that can generate complete sentences from a brief user input, such as a single word. We were informed by prior work that uncovered challenges in AAC-based social interactions, and this inspired us to create a specific speech macros for different purposes. Our speech macro concepts supported a variety of connections between user input and model output. The extend reply macro extends an AAC user short reply with more details that fit an ongoing conversation. In addition to supporting user input during a conversation, we explore the possibility of allowing users to fill out information ahead of time and use that stored information to generate suggestions in a later conversation. This functionality was explored with the reply with background information macro. The third macro turns a keyword into a help request. We developed this macro to convey how large language models can be prompted to complete very specific outlined tasks. We created prototypes for each speech macro that acted as design probes and demonstrated real-time output based on different conversational situations and user inputs. For the extend reply prototype, we included a place where the model knew what a conversation partner had just said, a place for user input to respond to the current conversation, and a place where suggested phrases would appear. Similarly, for the reply with background information macro, the prototype allowed users to provide short background information about themselves, and the model used this information to suggest possible answers to questions asked by a hypothetical conversation partner. The turn words into request prototype had only two components, a place where the user could input a word they wanted to ask help with and the space to see the generated help request suggestions. We recruited 12 adult expert AAC users who used a variety of devices to communicate. 
Our participants only had disabilities that affect speech production and no disabilities that affect language use. We gathered participants' feedback through a 90-minute remote video call where we shared the prototypes via screen sharing. During the study and through a post-study survey, we collected participants' thoughts on the speech macros, the use of generative large language models, and the output quality. Most participants found speech macros to be either very or extremely useful. Participants indicated that the extend reply macro could help them socialize more, and having the model no background information about them could help them answer routine biographical questions like, where did you go to college? Being able to get help request phrases in a quick manner with just one keyword was also rated as highly useful across participants. Nonetheless, when receiving input like the word smoke, in a case where the user wanted to try to request his caregiver to take him out for a smoke, the model steered the user from this specific activity. This highlighted some concerns of large language models possibly censoring or biasing against specific activities or topics. While our speech macros performed in an expected way and suggested phrases that were mostly relevant within the conversation scenarios, the output was insufficient in supporting AZ users in adding their personal tone and style and representing their personality and identity. Participants shared different ways in which they would rephrase certain model suggestions to better convey their personality. Like instead of saying something like my day went well, they would add something else like my day is going quite splendidly. One participant shared how he tends to always joke because he likes to put smiles on people's faces and that he really didn't see that macros could help him with this. But nevertheless, he would certainly use macros with family members who are impatient with his responses. Reflecting on our methods, people responded to our general idea of turning brief inputs to outputs, and they even built upon this by inventing their own abbreviation schemes. A participant suggested, I could type word and the symbol plus, and it would give me phrase suggestions that carry a more positive tone. Our study also helped us understand how reducing typing effort through generative phrases, even though practical, can have an effect on how others perceive the AAC user. Participant 10 explained that if other people in his close circle saw him choose an automated phrase instead of seeing him type one out, they might think he did not care enough or might not value his words equally. In conclusion, our study participants believe that AI-generated phrases could save time, physical and cognitive effort when communicating but felt it was important that these phrases reflect their own communication style and preferences. AI support could be helpful for low stakes, repetitive conversational tasks, but language model support needs to be further explored to understand how it might impact authorship, identity, and expression. By designing interactive prototypes and testing them out with AAC users, our work identified opportunities and challenges for future AI-enhanced AAC devices. We only highlighted some of our findings, but please check out our paper for more details. We thank all of our study participants and collaborators for making this work possible.